Let's learn in this video how to upgrade a AKS cluster. The Kubernetes project releases a new version each four months and AKS will maintain only three versions under the Azure support. So the cluster administrators should upgrade their clusters regularly. There are many options for upgrading the cluster. First option would be to upgrade both the control plane and the node pools at the same time. This is an easy option to upgrade, but could be risky for production clusters unless we have a rollback plan. A second option would be to upgrade the AKS control plane only and then upgrade the node pools. This is still risky when upgrading the node pool. Third option would be to perform the blue-green upgrade for the cluster. This means we would have a first cluster with the old version and then we create a new cluster with the new version and route traffic to that new cluster using Traffic Manager, for example. The fourth option would be to perform a blue-green upgrade, not at the cluster level, but for only the node pools. So first we upgrade the control plane only and then we add a new node pool and with a new version. This option would be the least risky and it is the easiest as it doesn't require cluster recreation. In this tutorial we will explore the blue-green upgrade for the node pool. We will perform the following steps. First one would be to upgrade the cluster control plane only to the new Kubernetes version. Then we'll go to add a second node pool, which is the green node pool with the new version. And then we'll go to cordon and drain the old node pool. This will force the pods to go from the old node pool to the new node pool. Then at that time, we can go to check the application is up and running. And at the end, we can go to remove that old node pool. So at the end, we end up with a cluster that is running both control plane and the node pool running the newer version. Let's see how that works. But first, go like and subscribe to the channel to get the latest videos. To demo the blue-green upgrade for the Kubernetes cluster, I'll be using the Azure command line and also the Kubernetes command line. So I have this script that will run all of these upgrades for me. And this script is available publicly on this GitHub repository. You can go to check it out. So let's start running this script. So I'll go out here to my command line. And first, I should be connected to my Azure subscription. I've already done that. And now I'll go to run the first part of the script to set up the demo environment. So I'm defining two variables here, the AKS name and then the AKS resource group. And then I'm checking the latest versions for AKS. Those versions will change each, each, uh, each uh, three or four months. So I get here those latest versions. I'll define the old version as the 121. Remember here we want to demo the upgrade. So I'll be upgrading from 121 to 122, which is going to be my newest version. So for that, I create here a resource group uh, in West Europe, for example. And then I create here an AKS cluster using the command line az AKS create. So I specify the name of my cluster, the resource group, the number of the nodes for the system node pool, and then the Kubernetes version is going to use here the old version. And again, we want to upgrade later to the latest version. Let's give this five minutes to spin up. Great, now our cluster is created successfully. So from here, I can go to uh, connect to that cluster using the command az aks get credentials. Once that succeeds, now I can use the command line for Kubernetes cube control get nodes to get the two nodes of for my system node pool in my cluster. Here I want things to be clear. So this is my system node pool and I want to create another node pool for the applications. So I, I want my pods, my system pods to be deployed only on the system node pool. And I want to keep the second, second node pool only for my applications. So what I'm going to do here is that I'll go to create a second node pool. So for that, I'll use az aks node pool add. I use I add a second system node pool that will replace this first one. And what will change here is that I have added this taint. No taints, critical add-ons only. Uh, critical add-ons only, no schedule. This means that in this node pool, only the system pods will be scheduled on this uh, system node pool. So it will not accept any application uh, pods. And now at this point, I should see two system node pools that have been created. So I'll go to delete the old one, which is called node pool one. 
So again, I'll use the command line az aks node pool delete, and I don't want to wait for the deletion of this node pool, so I'll say no wait. And now I'll go to add the user node pool. This is going to be the user node pool where I'm going to deploy my own pods, my app application pods. So for that, I'll use az aks node pool add to create another node pool. This one is going to be called blue pool. It will have three virtual machines with the size d 2 sb 5 and it's going to use the old Kubernetes version and it will have the mode user to say this is user node pool. Once that node pool is created, we can now check the new list of the node pools. And you would see here clearly one system node pool, that's the system pool and user node pool, that's my blue pool. So now I want to go to deploy a sample application in this pool. Uh, so for that, I'll use here the command kube control create deployment. I'm going to create 10 replica of the Nginx deployment. And those 10 replica should go to the blue pool, to the user node pool. They shouldn't be deployed to the system node pool. So with this way, I'm, I make sure that those pods will be deployed only to that user node pool because it's intended to host my uh, applications. So here I have done dry run just to view the YAML that will be deployed. So this is going to create a deployment with 10 replica of my Nginx uh, container. Let's go to deploy these containers and then let's go to watch for the pods from those containers. So as we see the pods here will start creating and they will be scheduled on the blue pool. And here we see them running all on the user node pool, not on the system node pool. So that makes it really clean for my applications to be deployed on any node pool except the system node pool. Now at this level we are ready to start the cluster upgrade. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to list my AKS clusters. This is to view all the clusters that I have in my subscription. And yeah, I can see this cluster dev 07 that is using the version, the old version 121.7. From here, I want to upgrade to the newest version for today, which is 122.4. So let's see how that works. So what I'm going to do here is that I'll go to upgrade my cluster, but not all the VMs in my cluster. I'll go just to upgrade the control plane only. So for that, I'm using this check here or this flag saying to upgrade only the control plane parts for my cluster. So I go to confirm that, confirm again. And this is telling me uh, that the control plane uh, might be unavailable for some time. So we started by upgrading the control plane only and later in the next steps, we'll go to upgrade the uh, node pools by using blue-green deployments. Now, once the upgrade of the cluster control plane was done successfully, we'll, we can go to upgrade the node pool. So for that, I'll use or I'll create, I'll add a new node pool that I'll call it a green pool with a newer version for my Kubernetes cluster. This is going to be the version 1.22. And this is, of course, a user node pool. Great. So now if I go again to check the node pools that I have in my cluster, I see that I have the three node pools, system pool, and then we have the blue and the green node pools. So the blue pool here uses the old version, and then the green node pool uses the latest version of Kubernetes. So now I can go to um, upgrade my applications or migrate my applications to run on this green node pool instead of the blue pool. Remember the pods that we have created earlier, they are still running on the blue pool. And that's what we can see from here. They are all running inside the blue pool. So from here, I have two options. First option, which is the bad one, I can go just to delete the blue node pool and my pods will be migrated automatically by Kubernetes to run inside the new green pool. But that's not good practice because I might have a service interruption. So a better option would be the second one, which is to go to cordon and drain the nodes from my old node pool. So let's start first by cordoning the, uh, all the nodes from my agent pool. For that, I'm using here the label agent pool blue pool. So in AKS, all the pools or all the nodes uh, from within a specific node pool, they will have all the label agent pool equal blue pool because that's the name of my agent. So it tells me here those three nodes and that node pool have been cordoned. So this means there will be 
there will not be any port that could be scheduled on this old pool. And now from here I'll go to drain that uh, old node pool. Draining here means that it, uh, Kubernetes will try to evict the pods from this node pool. Note here how I am using the command to control drain and then I'm adding the flag ignore daemon sets because daemon sets they should live inside the inside those um, uh, nodes. So if Kubernetes couldn't drain uh, those uh, pods running as part of a daemon set then it will just go to ignore them. I'm okay with that. So here Kubernetes will go to evict my application pods. Those are the Nginx uh, pods and it did that uh, successfully. So for, and as a result, it will drain all the nodes from my node pool. So here it tells me the first VM was drained, the second one was drained and also the third one. So all my VMs are drained here. So this means if I run kube control get nodes from my cluster, I should see that I have now three VMs with scheduling disabled. And those are the three VMs running the old version of Kubernetes. Now, as Kubernetes works in the native way, it will go to try to reschedule the old pods running from the old um, node pool. It will reschedule them to run inside the new node pool. So let's go to check those pods right now. So now, yes, they have been scheduled. 80 seconds ago to go to run on the new green pool. Now I can go to do all the testing required in order to make sure that my application works successfully and that my users can access the application and so on. And once I'm done, I can go then next to do the last step, which is to delete the old node pool. So to keep only one uh, node pool running the new Kubernetes version. And with that, I would have all my components in Kubernetes running all the same new version. And as a result of that, I'll finish up here with the clean uh, cluster with a system node pool and a user node pool.